for a covered repair again. This is the auto coverage now sweeping across America at a fraction of what dealerships charge and is now available to the public by calling today. The number to call is 800-547-5262. 800-547-5262. That's 800-547-5262. Welcome back to the What's Cooking program, America's food, wine, restaurant, travel, and entertainment show. I'm Michael Horn. That's Paul Stern. Boy, Mike, we're talking a little Opus One and kind of looking back at the menu that I happen to uh, kind of hold on to from the auction at Napa Valley. We experienced the uh, Opus One. Uh, you have that menu. Yeah, we, we experienced uh, the 2006, 2005, 2001, 1996, and 1985. I mean, this is really, we had a little bit of history there that evening. Roger Asselson is with us here. He is the Director of Public Relations. Michael Salachi, the winemaker, is here in studio. And uh, this has given us a chance to really uh, let you, our listeners, experience Opus One. Sometimes there's a mystique about wines, and I think Opus may have that mystique that it's like such the creme de la creme and such the high uh, mark of uh, wine excellence that a lot of people go like, well, I really can't try that. It's a really special occasion. And yet the wine is very approachable. It's wonderful to collect if you want to have the different vintages or the verticals from year by year by year, as they call it. But it's also great to get some wine. In fact, we got a treat to talk to you about here a little bit on the show. But Roger, give us the background as to what brought Opus together. I think that sort of puts it into words that our audience can appreciate as to how Opus One started. Well, uh, Mike, it was a simple idea, and it was a shared dream of two great men of wine, uh, Baron Philippe de Rothschild and Robert Mondavi. And they, they got together, uh, in fact, at a neutral uh, site, as it were, in Hawaii in, in 1970. In Hawaii? Yeah. They, they, oh. were, they were at a Wine and Spirits <laughs> Wholesalers <laughs> Convention. Wow. And uh, uh, r- the Baron had always wanted to do something in California, and Robert Mondavi was the, uh, the logical person to approach, so... Uh, they talked very tentatively about getting together for a joint venture. Uh, it wasn't until eight years later that they got together uh, and actually talked about a project together. Uh, the Baron uh, invited Robert to uh, his chateau. Uh, Robert had a fantastic meal uh, with his daughter, Marcy. And uh, uh, after uh, a wonderful dinner that included uh, uh, a 19, an eight, 1870 chateau, Lafitte, uh, shout out to 1870, Mouton Rothschild. 18, 1870. 1870. Uh, the Rothschilds and the Mondavis together. It Let's was pop it open was one of those 1870s. I it, love in, incredible. <laughs> but but it, it was all the more astonishing for Robert because not one word of business was discussed. And Robert said, well, okay, maybe we don't have a joint venture. Maybe we have nothing here. He went to bed. Then the next morning, uh, the Baron called him up to his bedroom uh, where the Baron had done a lot of his work uh, in the later years uh, with his uh, uh, caftan robes uh, and, and the dogs at the, the foot of the bed. And Robert came in, and uh, within about an hour, they... they uh, You've got to be kidding me. Nope. So they conducted this deal before breakfast. Before <laughs> breakfast, ro- in, as in it were. bath robes. This is good. I like and, this. And Opus One was therefore born. Uh, wow. And so it took the lawyers a couple more years to figure out what the details would be, but that was the... The idea to, to marry the best of California with the best of the old world of France, and that's kind of what the mark has been with Opus One, right? That, that's it, and, and we, we try to stick to that. Uh, we we, uh, we want, to, uh, want the wine to express uh, a California site, the California terroir, but we, we uh, make use of, uh, of French uh, techniques and... and and, and a, a different way of, of, of going, a different way of looking at uh, at the vineyards. And Michael uh, is is more qualified than I to talk about that. So, so Michael, when you come on, Michael Salachi, the winemaker, you you uh, you come into this picture with all this history and all of what Rogers just mentioned there in the background. And then you come in and say, well, wait a minute, let's take a look at this and get the roots to go a little deeper. Let's get the fruit a little more intense, cut some of the water back. I mean, that's kind of bold, but Opus has always been bold. I mean, when you came in, was that sort of the technique of the day when you said, here's something we may want to move towards, which will make our wine even better? Well, I saw it as a, uh, when I arrived at Opus, I really tried to understand what the tradition was, what uh, what each, um, the Mandavis and the Rothschilds were hoping to achieve at Opus One. Uh, so you, you go, you ride into town, tie your horse up and take a look at what's going on. And then, so you did get the lay forward, of the land. You looked at the see lay of the land. land. And then my objective was to uh, was twofold to enhance tradition. Driving roots deeper is symbolic of that. Right. 
and to um, maintain innovation because these two gentlemen were incredible innovators and I don't think that um, they uh, would want Roger or I or David Pearson or the other folks on our team uh, to just be sitting back and tending the shop. So we have to, to uh, assume risks and push to make a, a, a better wine that expresses a site in every vintage. One of the things that I happened to take notice of was the care and the handling, the attention to detail as it pertained to the grapes themselves. Uh, is that something that goes back to an old world style? Is that something that uh, was uh, this uh, kind of unique to uh, Opus One? Uh, it is. Uh, it is more old world. I remember when I did my first internship uh, in winemaking in Bordeaux, and grapes in would Bordeaux, fall. That's in, good, in, yes. and grapes would fall out of the. Uh, out of the, um, the, the boxes or the, the gondola, and the owner was picking them up and putting them back into the, whereas sometimes you see in California, it's more bountiful, and you see fruit falling, falling off of off a truck or whatever. People and step on it or whatever. Exactly. And keep, this so is there the was grape, please. <laughs> so there's this uh, respect, incredible respect for the fruit. It's that kind of I caressing and putting it back in, exactly. right? Exactly. Like you just did with two hands, and you pick it up and you you don't want to crush anything on no, it. Yeah. No, let you don't. That's crush an old world style. So, Definitely. so when you get that marriage into it, and the Rothschilds and the Mondavis, and you come on here in the the early new millennium here in two thousand and one, you said you came yes. on board, and so when you hear about grapes that grow on hillsides, obviously those roots are going down deep. They're looking for any water they can get to get that small, intense fruit. Now you're in the flatlands of Napa Valley. You're in the heartland of Napa Valley. You have that great soil, but yet you say, "Let's drive them down a little deeper and see what we get." So, what's happened to the wine? It's going to take when you started doing that to, uh, a while for the roots to get down. It's going to take two or three years for us to get that harvest back. So, I'm guessing right about now we're going to start seeing the the fruits of your labor. What, what have you discovered? The vines are um, maybe fixed, but they're starting to hit their stride. All right, so, so what does that mean? you got a nice, big, wide smile for those of you that are not looking on the video cams in the studio. What's happening? What's the character that we're going to see in Opus? We're really seeing a, a, a greater intensity in the wine, but not excessive. We're, not, we're, not, we're making wines that go with food to be shared with family and friends uh, with a meal. And so we're not making wines that are going to jump out of the glass. But they're, they're very... Um, deep and um, complex, and they unfold in the glass. And the t I think the thing that we've affected most with our uh, techniques in the vineyard is to change the mouthfeel, the texture of the wine. There's a complete integration from the core, the richness of the wine, through the texture to the edge of the wine, the structure. And then it just goes on like a So it belt. goes on, and the fact that it goes on, so I would say drinkable now, but yet uh, approachable now, and you can enjoy it now but you could lay that down and enjoy it for years to come as well. You've kind of got the best of both worlds. Exactly. We'll find out. I think you brought a treat for us. So straight ahead, we continue. The gentlemen from Opus One are here on CRN. It's the What's Cooking Pro, and stay with us on CRN. It's better to do one thing well than many second rate. And that's been the underlying principle of Silver Oak Cellars since its founding back in 1972 by the Duncan family. However, the Duncan